Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Acmer P2 33W laser engraver. Besides the 33W laser, it also has 10W and 20W laser modules priced from $559 to $1,200. They all come with the same frame and linear rails, which is very unusual for a laser engraver as most machines on the market are using palm wheels or steel wheels. As this machine uses linear rails, the max speed is 30,000 millimeters per minute. It has air assist built in, and the power of the air pump is supplied from the machine, so you can use light burn to turn it on for cutting and off for engraving. It has a limit switch on both the X and Y axis, and there's also a lever on the laser module for handy focal length adjustment. For safety features, it has an emergency button, flame detection, and a gyroscope to stop the machine when it drops or catches on fire. It also has a lock for you to lock the machine to avoid unauthorized operation from kids. The frame is a custom-made aluminum frame. It's more rigid than those 20 by 20 extrusion frames of other machines in the market. The working area is 420 by 400 millimeters, which is slightly larger than a standard 400 by 400 engraver. For optional accessories, it has a honeycomb bed, an enclosure, and a rotary roller that I will also test in this video. I would like to thank Acme for sending me this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. And with that, let's get started. The machine is shipped with both a shipping box and a retail box. All parts are protected by laser cut foam and accessories are placed in separate boxes. The machine's frame is mostly pre-assembled, simplifying the setup process. You only need to attach the laser module, connect the power supply, and the air assist pump. Additionally, the package includes two spare laser lenses for replacements, a user manual, a power and speed parameter reference table for various materials, a test run result from the machine, sample materials, tools, safety goggles, and cables. Inside the micro SD card, you'll find a Lightburn machine profile for you to install and set up on your computer. Just go to the device settings, import and select the profile, and you're good to go. After humming the machine, I set the travel speed to the maximum of 30,000 mm per minute and it was moving smoothly. Before conducting any tests, I will also set up the honeycomb bed and enclosure provided by Acmer. The honeycomb bed may appear slightly small on the machine. The enclosure is a tent style and requires you to assemble a simple frame and attach the tent to it. While it may not look as good as some other enclosures I have used, it has a bottom which most enclosures don't have, so I guess it can better contain smoke. It also includes an exhaust fan and ducting, but I will just use my own ducting that is already connected to exhaust the smoke outside my garage. I will start testing with some symbol engraving. According to the reference table, plywood engraving is recommended at 13,000 mm per minute. However, a 30 or 33 watt module can typically handle faster speeds. This recommendation serves as a safe starting point, so I will start with 15,000 mm per minute and see the results. It seems that the maximum darkness is achieved at around 80%. If you exceed this level, the wood tends to get overly burned. I will also try the recommended 13,000 mm per minute speed and see what happens. It appears that the maximum darkness is achieved at around 70%. I will also experiment with speeds of 17,000 and 20,000 mm per minute. I think the optimal speed for plywood engraving falls within the range of 17,000 to 20,000 mm per minute, which can serve as a reference for subsequent tests. Next, I will try some cutting and use the Lightburn material test feature to generate a cutting test. I will cut this 2 mm plywood at a 500 mm per minute speed up to a 1200 mm per minute speed.
It can cut through completely at the speed of 900, but for some reason, the sample G-code didn't turn on the air assist. So I will use my own file, turn on the air assist in Lightburn, and run another test. With air assist on, the machine can cut through the 2 millimeter plywood at 1,100 millimeters per minute. Since this is a 33 watt module, I will try some thicker 5.35 millimeter plywood at a different speed. It can cut through this plywood at 450 millimeters per minute, but for anything at 500 or faster, it didn't cut through. Then, I will make an eagle on the same plywood, using 17,000 millimeters per minute for engraving and 400 for cutting. The result looks alright, the engraving is okay, and the cut is also clean. At the back, it is mostly clean except for some wood oil that sticks to the honeycomb bed and leaves some marks. Overall, it looks okay. After that, I will cut some even thicker wood, starting with this leftover half-inch red oak wood from my other CNC machine test. I tried to cut it 150, 120, 100, and 75 millimeters per minute with a single pass, but it didn't cut through fully. Then, I will attempt multiple passes while avoiding speeds slower than 150 millimeters per minute. When the laser module moves too slowly, it tends to burn the wood too dark and increases the risk of catching a fire. So let's see how using a speed of 150 for three passes works. and it cuts through completely. The result is better for multiple passes, or the wood would be burnt too dark. I will also use a 150 speed and three passes to cut out a 20mm thick polonia wood. It can also cut through without too much burning. This is just for testing the laser power, and I don't think anyone is going to cut through wood of this thickness with a laser engraver instead of just using a saw. Let's try some real projects. I will start with making a birthday gift to my friend with a dragon image. The result is pretty nice. I think 17,000 is still a bit too dark, so it could have been even better if I used 20,000. Then, I will engrave a logo on this 2.5mm acrylic and cut a circle. Beginning with a 20,000mm per minute speed and 70% power for engraving, and then using 300mm per minute and 100% power for cutting. The result is very nice. Both the engraving and cutting are finished beautifully. Up next, I will engrave some patterns on this piece of stainless steel. The thickness is around 1.5mm, but it doesn't matter as there is no way a diode laser can cut through this thick stainless steel. 
I will use a 3000 ml per minute speed and 100% power for engraving. The marks are really nice. They're permanent and won't go away, even if I try to clean it with 99% isopropyl alcohol. Then, I will engrave a picture at the back of the plate. The marks you can see are from my previous attempt with some misalignment. As this piece of stainless steel is still good, I will just engrave a picture on the back. I will use the same 3000 mm per minute speed and 100% power. The quality of the picture is really good. The resolution is close to 300 dpi as I use 0.09mm line interval. It looks even better with lighting from different angles. As a diode laser cannot engrave on transparent materials like clear glass or acrylic, I will test on clear glass using marking paper. These types of marking papers are available in various colors, and you can easily find something similar on Amazon. Since we are essentially burning the marking paper to leave marks on the glass, we can engrave at a higher speed. I will use a speed of 20,000 milliliters per minute with 70% power. The logo doesn't look too bad. I think the result would be better if we were engraving an even simpler pattern. When using a diode laser to burn marking paper onto a piece of glass, the result may not look as nice as when using a CO2 laser to directly engrave on the glass surface. Then, I will engrave a QR code on this anodized aluminum card. As we are just going to burn off the coating on the card, we can also engrave at high speeds. I will use a 15,000 ml per minute speed and 100% power. The black burn mark can be easily removed. I just cleaned it with some isopropyl alcohol and the result is pretty nice. The QR code also actually works. It will direct you to my website auroratechchannel.com where I recently added a price tracker to compare over 100 popular 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines. It captures all price movements in the market and auto updates every hour. So don't forget to check it out at auroratechchannel.com. Finally, I will try out the roller. The rotary roller from Acmer is a basic one. The rollers can be adjusted according to the size of the object, and it works pretty well on larger objects like mugs and bottles, but I will try to engrave a small cylinder with a diameter of 32mm and see how it does. My picture is a little bit light, so I'll leave it there and run another pass at 8,000 mm per minute. When the roller is spinning back and forth, a small object like this may not be able to stay in the same position, so the second pass is actually a bit off, but overall it's not too bad. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. One. The build quality is high. The linear rails on both the X and Y axis are sturdy and smooth, the frame is rigid, and it's sturdy even when engraving at high speeds. 2. The 33 watt laser module is powerful. It can cut through wood up to 20 millimeters thick. I don't think it's the best idea to use this machine to cut wood that thick, but it still demonstrates the power of the module. 
When using a high power module, it not only lets you cut thicker wood, it also lets you engrave faster, which is especially important if you're using it in a shop. I can use up to a 20,000 ml per minute speed for engraving on wood and acrylic, and if you engrave on something like cardboard, you can probably go even faster. 3. The power of the air pump is controlled by the machine. You can use a light burn to turn it on when cutting, and to turn it off when engraving. You don't have to babysit the machine to adjust the air pump manually like other machines with an add-on air pump. 4. The machine has all safety features you would expect from a laser engraver, including a flame sensor and gyroscope to stop the machine when it drops or catches on fire, an emergency stop button, and a safety lock. 5. The small details are well polished, so there are no sharp corners, the cable management is done nicely, and the way you adjust the focal length is handy. The speed and power reference table is comprehensive and accurate, so even beginners can use it as reference without too much confusion. Now for the cons. 1. Although the build quality of this machine is high, the accessories are not in the same class. For example, the honeycomb bed is too small, the appearance of the laser tent isn't that great, and the rotary roller is also the most basic one. I would prefer to see some accessories that match this machine's build quality. 2. It has a Wi-Fi feature, but it only works with a MakerBase Laser mobile app. If you own another budget laser engraver and have some experience with that app, it's really not that useful. Since the Wi-Fi hardware is already here, it would be better to make it more useful or just remove it entirely and lower the cost. 3. The 33 watt laser module demands greater cooling compared to lower power modules, resulting in a fan noise level in the low to mid 60 decibels, which is louder than I had expected. The fan operates simultaneously with the machine, even when the laser module is not in use. However, during machine operation, Alongside the noise from the exhaust fan and air pump, the fan noise isn't excessively loud. It would be better to activate it alongside the laser module, and then switch it off after about a minute to cool down the module once the job is finished. 4. There are limit switches on both the X and Y axis, and although they're fully functional, they're just the basic switches like those you see on an Ender 3. Using optical limit switches and having triggers on both ends of each axis would be better. They not only make the machine more premium, but also provide better accuracy when you have to stop the job, home the machine again, and restart it at the same position. In conclusion, I am happy with this machine and I have no complaints about the build quality and the hardware apart from the slightly loud fan on the laser module and the limit switches. However, there is no other machine that uses linear rails with a high power laser module with this level of build quality. The build quality is X-Tool grade with all linear rails instead of steel wheels. On the other hand, the optional accessories are just average. Although functional, the machine still deserves more premium accessories. For software, if you're willing to invest on a $1,000 laser engraver, it would be probably not that big of a deal to spend an extra $60 to get the Lightburn software. And if you already have an engraver, you may already have the software. So, if you're looking for a high quality build laser engraver, you can definitely take a look at this Acmer P2. It currently has 10 watts, 20 watts, 33 watts, and possibly a 48 watt coming in the future. For your reference, I've listed all the models on my price tracker at auroratechchannel.com, and you can save $140 if you get the kit version that requires you to assemble the frame, but still offers the same hardware. I've also put the link to Acmer's official website under the description. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.